Well, here we go. A cancer diagnosis causes you to question, what are you doing with your time? Ecstasy. Ecstasy, MDMA. It could turn MDMA into a regulated prescription drug. And I can't remember the guy who's in charge, Dubrin, I think, or du Dubler, I can't think of the guy's name, but he's been pioneering all of this. There's a fascinating story behind this, and a lot of it can be traced back to a small group of, I would say, unlikely characters. One of them is here with me now, Rick Doblin. He runs the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Research. I actually met Rick in 1974, and he's bare-chested, you know, his long hair, looking like a real stud, and he's standing in front of this beautiful house, and he's got his pet wolf. And he was just this psychedelic dream. Back then, when we asked Rick, well, what do you want to do? He was really clear. He said, I want to be a psychedelic psychotherapist. And we just laughed. Here we are, what, 41, 42 years later, where he has just stayed on that path. And at a certain point, he decided, I don't want to continue to be an outlaw. And yet, I don't want to change who I am in order to conform to what the laws are. So I'll just work to change the laws. That's sort of the thought process that typifies Rick. Once I told my parents I wanted to drop out of college and study LSD, <laughs> um, I, I sort of was testing their limits, but, but they said yes. <laughs> this crazy wild man morphed into the director of a nonprofit that was sponsoring cutting edge research at Harvard. Rick laid out everything he's done with maps in his Harvard dissertation, step by step. I will scream it from the mountaintops. People should have access to this treatment. It can treat everything from eating disorders and anxiety to PTSD. Once I got back from Afghanistan, I spent about a year and a half in denial. James Casey is a veteran who is a subject in our veteran MDMA PTSD study. I didn't really know James until he reached out to me and sent me this letter, a letter of thanks. I put his letter in my wallet and you know, carried it around for years and, you know, it's like a good luck thing. Everything that you've started before I was even born just helped be able to give me my life back. It really hit me a few years ago that Rick is going to go down in history as the leading figure in the psychedelics reform movement of the late 20th and early 21st century. I have great admiration. I mean, talk about a person who's changed the world. Rick's one of those people. He knows what he wants to do. He knows what he's been put on this planet to do. The idea to go through the FDA approval federal drug process, that was Rick's idea. That's the map, and he drew the map. Feeling good. Feeling connected to something bigger than us. This is Darwin. I want to thank you for the gift of your son. He saved my life, and I hope you're very proud of him. Thank you. I think he's a historic figure. I really do. If the psychedelic experience becomes a integral part of our culture. I think he'll be up there with some pretty big names that I hesitate to mention. You know, like Freud, for instance. I've decided to try to help Nirvan see the real story of how everything actually happens, but um, I feel like that's something for after MDMA is a medicine. I think that once I'm satisfied with what we're doing, then I'm no longer qualified to be the head of MAPS. Although there'll be an enormous more still to accomplish. Sasha Shogun's lab, where it all began. Out of this came creations that are helping fuel now a psychedelic renaissance around the world. Out of this will come the healing of millions of people.
And I came to the happy conclusion that there's nothing I want to change, that what I'm doing with my time is exactly what I want to be doing. Of course, that's been that case for 50 years. Okay, that's it for now.